Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending June 27th. First off, thank you for sending this in, Tim M. Samsung Safety Truck. I'll play just a little bit of the video here, but I won't play any audio because I got dinged again for using audio in a video and had to redo something because of that crazy YouTube. But anyway, what it is is you've got these uh, four screens so that you can see around the truck. I don't know how many times you guys have been on uh, long trips, and it seems like uh, no problem all the time you're traveling up until you get to an area where you have to make a turn or watch for signs real close and sure enough there's going to be one of those trucks in front of you and I'm not crabbing on the trucks I mean they bring us all the kind of stuff we need and I sure order enough stuff myself that's delivered by trucks but it is a bit frustrating and with this kind of a safety set of four screens on the back of the truck that Samsung is uh, trying out I guess in Argentina right now I think that's a pretty good deal there I mean at least uh, gives you uh, maybe doesn't give you as much detail that, that you would really like seeing ahead but at least gives you the opportunity to possibly pass the truck. So I think that's a pretty decent idea. Next up, I had talked last week about that I was going to try the Google image search. Well, I did give it a try and I thought, well, maybe I'm being a little bit ridiculously oversimple here because I just tried some really ordinary objects and I thought this isn't going to give Google image search very much of a challenge. Well, guess what? I found out uh, Google image search is not really all it's cracked up to be. I uh, took pictures of some various simple objects thinking these are going to be slam dunks but in the first four objects Google actually got nothing. I took a picture of a, a shop fan that's just sitting in my shop. I took a picture of a bucket. I took a picture of a battery case and I took a picture of a spray paint can of uh, white Rust-Oleum spray, uh, spray paint. I, did, I turned the label facing away because I didn't want to give it a you know super lot of hints to it. I just wanted it to uh, check on based on the object. Of those four objects, I scrolled down for about three pages or beyond. Google did not even um, produce a similar object. They were just um, objects that were shaped similarly, but for example in the shop fan one, there was not even one single fan of any type. For the bucket one, there was not one single picture of any type of bucket, and so on and so on. I mean, same with the spray paint can. Nothing even, nothing even similar, not even a bucket of paint. It was just Basically, I think what it was doing was it was just detecting the edges of the main object and trying to match that up. But, uh, yeah, I think with I think what it is is with no context, no tags or stuff like that, because they suggested when I posted the pictures if I put some descriptions in, too. So I think that's the real hint part of it. And then finally, the last one I got did somewhat seem to recognize at least a bit of what the picture was. That's the picture of the uh, red Robin Redbreast that I've got here. And, I mean, to me, that's about as obvious a picture as you could. And I got a... Uh, I got some hits of, uh, of birds, but they weren't similar to the robin at all. They were just, you know, other types of birds, parakeets, uh, blackbirds. Uh, but I also even got a dog, a coyote, and a dinosaur besides. So I would say the Google image search has still uh, got a long, long ways to go without any kind of tags, reference, or hashtags. Forget it. Um, you're not going to just search on an image and get anything uh, recognizable. Not without helping it out, at least quite a bit. This is um, something I, this is from Ars Technica. Um, people have been posting that the uh, two self-driving cars, one of them by Google, actually had a, a close call. Well, that's not really true. Um, I'll read the title right here. No, two self-driving cars didn't have a close call on Silicon Valley streets. A pair of self-driving cars from rival companies had a close call in Silicon Valley earlier this week, Reuters reported. According to John Absmeer, who is the head of Delphi's local lab and was a passenger in his company's prototype, Audi Q5, a Google car suddenly cut off the Delphi car as it was about to change lanes on a San Antonio road in Palo Alto. What, when that happened, the Audi Q5 took appropriate action. But that's not what Abs... I'll try to get this name. Absmeer meant, according to Kristen Kiley. I was there for the discussion with Reuters about automated vehicles. The story was taken completely out of context. Imagine that. Reporters taking the story out of context. When describing a type of complex driving scenario that can occur in the real world, our expert provided an example of lane change scenario that our car recently experienced, which coincidentally was one was with one of the Google cars also on the road at the same time. It wasn't a near miss as described in the reader story. Instead, she explained how this was a normal scenario and the Delphi car performed admirably. Our car did exactly what it was supposed to do, she wrote. Our car saw the Google car move into the same lane as our car was planning to move into, but upon detecting that the lane was no longer open, it decided to terminate the move and wait until it was clear again. So that's basically all that happened. Just uh, 
more drama llama in the news media. But I guess on slow news days, if you have to make up stories you, or headlines, at least you make them up. Um, this next one, um, as we're approaching the time where the New Horizons spacecraft is going to be visiting Pluto, um, July 14th, I believe, is the closest pass, so we're going to be getting better and better pictures of Pluto. I wanted to kind of harken back to an old uh, idea, and this is a Headlines in Astronomy magazine, Why Didn't Voyager Visit Pluto? Originally, the Voyager spacecraft was... Uh, going to visit Voyager 1 was going to visit Pluto after it did the flyby of Saturn but because they were kind of intrigued by the moon Titan which ended up being quite astounding um, let's see uh, yet when not, I'll just read the first part Voyager 1 was, has now traveled more than 16 billion miles going uh, drifting past Jupiter and Saturn in a long haul and in the solar system it is incredible success yet when NASA initially programmed what became the interstellar mission Voyager was actually set to see Pluto in March of 1986 as well the plan changed mid-flight and uh, basically what they did was they wanted to explore Titan a little bit more because it was kind of a, a fascinating planet and I mean uh, for being so far out and stuff like that it had a really thick atmosphere and stuff so I don't halfway blame them plus the fact that the uh, people that are um, part of the New Horizon probe says it's kind of a blessing in disguise because of the fact that now with the more advanced equipment, the more advanced cameras, sensors, things like that, um, what they're going to be able to do with the Pluto flyby is way more than they ever could have uh, uh, hoped to do with the Voyager probe. So um, this is kind of a, a neat article to read here, but uh, I, I really agree with what they did, that they uh, did the right decision in actually diverting Voyager so that it uh, ended up um, visiting uh, Titan instead, so I think we get uh, two really uh, cool uh, planetary explorations out of it. You know, we get to know a little bit more about Titan, and then we get a little bit uh, to know a little bit more about Pluto in just uh, upcoming a few weeks. So, anyway, uh, let's see. I think that's about it for this week. Um, thank you, everybody, for participating. Thank you, everybody, that continues to post in the Dumpster Divers Facebook page. I really appreciate that a lot, and uh, I will catch you guys next week.